Usually when you bring up the concept of free speech and Jess Phillips, the Labour MP in the same sentence, it's a bit confusing. And yes, it is confusing. Jess Phillips was on BBC Politics Live and she was educated and schooled by Matthew Goodwin. Now, Professor Goodwin decided to raise awareness about how free speech in this country is in danger and it's, we've already basically lost the fundamentals of free speech. Jess Phillips, the Labour MP, doesn't really actually understand what we mean by free speech. I'm going to show you this clip, but let's remember, in case you don't know, Jess Phillips is a self-appointed champion of feminism, the working classes, students, every sort of group that you could think of, because she knows better than you, and she can run your life on your behalf. Well, if we look at the evidence that we've got about sort of what is happening across the country, um, uh, the UCU, which is a main union for academics mm. like me, their report suggests that one in three of Britain's academics are what we call self-censoring. They're hiding their views on campus because they feel like they can't express them. And King's College London have done a report last year. They found that one quarter of all university students in the country say that... How will this bill change that? Say they're... So, OK, firstly, she, she, she's not even... This is the most important part of that story. He was literally just about to finish by giving the, the punchline explaining what's happening. She doesn't actually let him finish. She's, she's going to keep doing it, by the way, throughout this whole uh, clash and encounter. She's going to keep interrupting him. And she's basically, she, she sounds genuine. Watch this. She, she sounds like a school child who doesn't actually understand anything. So she keeps asking stupid questions. Usually when we were a kid, we were told there's no stupid question. Just ask anything. But not when you're a grown-up adult as a member of parliament. Self-censoring. How will that change? Because it? what's happening in universities, what I've observed working in universities for 20 years, is unfortunately some universities have become highly political organisations yep. where it's quite clear that certain social and political norms are at work that leave people who don't share that particular ideology or view, it leaves them feeling as though they can't express their opinion and their views. And it but also I'm means in, that... I'm in spaces all the time where people don't agree with my ideology. Yeah, Jess... and I... OK, so... She's now going to talk about how, oh, I think I know what you mean, Matthew. Uh, I, I've been in situations where people don't agree with me, uh, uh, but, they, but I'm, I'm fine. I feel okay about that. But, um, there's a difference between people uh, disagreeing with you and having some sort of different opinion. And the other side, the council culture, the side that actually would say, because of the opinion you expressed, you need to be cancelled. You need to be deplatformed. You need to lose your job, your career, your friends, and everything else. She doesn't understand this basic fundamental. I have to just. I have to try and push on through. It's dreadful if people feel like that. They shouldn't yes, feel like not, that. We're not. But being able to, for somebody to be able to sue a university well, okay, let me give you a in order word. to speak there, let's say a horrible anti-Semite, being able to sue a university because their students didn't want them to be there. I don't know what the benefit of that I'll is. I'll give you a real world case. So she doesn't understand it now. Goodwin is going to explain it. Um, but, but the issue is, again, as I said, that these people have not been challenged properly because until now, we've only had the mainstream media platforms like the BBC. And I'm surprised that they're even talking about this on the BBC. In this, on these platforms, these politicians, established politicians, have not been challenged until now. That's why they don't know how to do it. Uh, well, I've got hundreds of well, non okay, so cases. Well, Presumably, you would feel that Kathleen Stock losing her job at the University of Sussex. Well, we have. Well, hang on, because we haven't got we so haven't got time dreadful. to talk about one specific but case. But she right. left her job, and the university. But support. if oh. we had if we had this you legislation, <laughs> if we had this legislation <laughs> at that point in time, well, how would it have changed Academics, it? academics like Kathleen would and many others who are being harassed on campus would be able to go to the Director of Academic Freedom. But that, that's the key point, and that was the end of their debate, and basically they didn't really allow more time to have this discussion, which is classic BBC. I'm not even surprised. But Kathleen Scott Stock is a, is a perfect example of either be people who are either being pushed out, forced out, or actually being fired. And they don't really understand this, people like Jess Phillips. They, they say, well, well, they just leave their jobs. Uh, yeah, because they're, you're literally chasing them out. There is a difference, and but this is the system that we have. Uh, by the way, 6 p.m. today at, on the show that we have called Disrupt, we have a big, big update on uh, the Rwanda plan, the Priti Patel's Rwanda plan, and we're going to expose the biggest flaws in that agreement. Uh, I've read through the whole agreement and the, 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 some details 
are slightly concerning, which means that our borders are not really going to be fully protected. This agreement is not perfect. So subscribe to the channel. We're going to come back in half an hour and then at 6 p.m. with Disrupt, Amaya, TC and we are the media.